I would like to point out that you had um, very accurate refraction outcome, so all your patients were within half of the plus minus diopter. Yes. So that definitely uh, is also very accurate um, constant setting probably, as you said, they're still developing, but probably... We're, we're still is, developing. It's, yeah. it's preliminary. It's a small group, so I'm yeah. always very careful with, you know, coming out and saying this, this is it. But usually when you start out using a new lens, your results will be all over the place. Yes. And here we have a very tight result in terms of, of refractive outcome and standard deviation. And I think that's very encouraging. Yeah. That's also what we get in our series. We're all within half of the opta. Now, could you explain us a little bit about, about, about the stray light measurement? So this is testing of point spread function. Is that, is that correct? Well, so. the, the point spread function, if, if we look at it, the tip of the point spread function is basically our, our visual acuity. It's 0 0.1 degree from it, and this is where you will find all the uh, higher order aberrations and the lower order aberrations. The further away from the center of the point spread function uh, that you go, more degrees, then you will come into an area first of stray light, which is between 0 0.1 degree and 10 degrees. And if you go further out onto the point spread function, function then you will get to the contrast sensitivity testing. The, the sequent that was developed by Tom van den Berg spe specifically found that we can psychophysically test our patients and find a direct correlation between how much backscatter the eye shows and how much log S, stray light, we can find. And because of this direct correlation, we can find out how a lens is functioning even when we we, we just test the patient, we, we, we hardly have to talk to them. We know what their quality of vision is because we can by now compare it to a big beta database of a lot of patients that were tested in the past. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, may I ask you about this hyperopic shift, slight hyperoptic shift that you get? Did, did it affect the vision in uh, any way, uh, you think? Or is this lens a bit more, let's say, tolerant? If we uh, take our refractometers, maybe even target to Pranos, Johnson & Johnson lens show that minus 0.5 to minus 1, something like this. Everyone know that. Huh. So <coughs> it's like an Adolf effect. Mm -hmm. So maybe this Adolf effect and then so I worry about patient is want to get at least a 20, 20 whole distance. And then, so I, 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 my target actually it's a just a Purano or a little bit of Emperops, mm -hmm. Hyperops, Hyperops. Point two, point zero, Purano to point zero point one diopter is my target for this lenses. Right. That's why, so it's lens is going to the targets, but for near vision, if you want to show the J1 or near vision, maybe slightly you know, myopic is better. You seem to have a low myops also in the group, low myopia, ho, ho. which is not the traditional uh, type of multifocal eye wells. Do you feel confident with the group of uh, myopia? Yes, yes, yeah. I, I understand. So the low myopia people already see the near vision, right? Even that, it's, I, I implanted a lot. So it's, the result is good. And then, so patient satisfaction is also good. Could you, for questions, use microphone, please, so that others will hear. May I just ask you in between, uh, did your impression or patients were the impression about the halos and glare comparison yes, to other lenses? Yes, yes, yes. I, I uh, you know, I was, I, I, I get the award from the Fiji or over 1,000 implantation in Asia in the last years. I, I implanted a lot of visual lenses. At the time, the, some patient <coughs> had a complaint of Harland Greers. And some patient is angry, and the, some patient called to the government. You know, <laughs> I get uh, Harland Greers after surgeries. But in the, after this, uh, this lenses, I, I don't have any experience with the patients who complain of Harland Greers. I just wanted to ask if they yes. complain uh, exactly about something special glare on so or nothing? Or just they saw better as they were kids? So exactly. for, for this range is? Yes, the 8%. Okay, 8%. Yeah. 
So 8% is, you know, I, I, told, I already explained. Some patients have very good visions with measurement, even that sometimes have a complaint. But, you know, sometimes patients take time to see the near visions. But one week, one month, sometimes it's not good. But one, if wait three months, sometimes patients are getting near visions, more. So I, I, this, um, the, uh, we're asking the you know, survey to the patients in the one month. It's been very short times. That's why you know, I have some complaints. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So in, in general, may I ask you about this uh, questionnaire that you have put? So you have approximately 85 out of 100. So we would say uh, yeah, it's general never satisfaction in, uh, yeah, level uh, would be 8.5 yeah. out of Yeah, uh, but when you use the VP14 yeah. in the patients uh, um, in a shorter time after the procedure, uh, not only in this type of lenses, that, uh, shorter yeah. time than six months, you never get the hundred. Oh. This is uh, because the patients uh, used to be um, uh, to be uh, uh, friendly with the lens, friendly with the new uh, new optical um, new optical images uh, they see, and uh, I think that this is the reason that the patients uh, uh, have some uh, some uh, problem. But we reach in one patient in two uh, both eyes hundred after uh, three months. Yeah. Eva, maybe you discussed it, but I think that one of the advantages of this lens is color vision. Yeah. you have any, yeah. any hints by patients on color yeah. vision? This is true. Um, uh, we ask uh, the patients about uh, uh, many tasks, but uh, um, many of the patients told that the color see are very sh uh, sharp. Uh, we have one patient who is uh, a cosmetologist and she told, is uh, quite young because 64 years old patient is quite young for uh, such a procedure and uh, she told me that uh, the color of the, uh, the painter of, uh, she used is uh, now in different, uh, very, um, uh, very sharp uh, uh, so the color is, uh, this is also good, um, a good question because uh, we have sometimes the patients who are architect. This is also important. Uh, the color should be, uh, should be nice. Okay, one question. Yeah. Uh, is this um, pupil dependent? No. 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 Are you sure? Um, <laughs> until now, yes. Okay. And uh, what is the, you have limits in the pupil size for? Choosing the patients, you have limit or, or no? Usually, you when we measure the, the, this is normal pupil between three and six uh, millimeters. So we, we, don't, uh, we don't choose the patients because of the pupil. Uh, this was uh, chosen the patients who are um, ready to, uh, to participate in the study for our regular waiting list, the patients who come to a hospital for regular cataract surgery, and we, we ask that we have the possibility to uh, implant the trifocal lens. Uh, this is the one group, and this was not, uh, not uh, the, the, the pupil was normal. And the second part of the patients was the, the uh, as the university hospital, the patients know that we have some uh, possibility to uh, participate in the, in the trial or scientific work. So uh, it was also the patients who are not, uh, not uh, disqualified because of pupil. Just one more quick question. Yes, uh, this is a different question because we heard many things about performance of the lens, but nothing about PCO. What you have this question for doctor and for the others. What about PCO? I think, think we are too early because we, yeah, we month, all have uh, up to six early. months follow-up time and up six months now, you no can't PCO. expect a lot of PCO. Yes, because I ask this because with a similar material from other companies, we get lots of PCO at two years. Lots. I think that well, Professor Gorzak can... I, I would like to comment on PCO. Traditionally, we have been taught that hydrophobic IOLs have less PCO than hydrophilic IOLs because of, of, of uh, fibronectin and because of closure of the capsule and stickiness of the capsule to the lens. However, uh, we have data on hydrophilic IOLs that depending on how it is being designed, this is what will show you how much PCO you get. So if you have a good posterior ring on the optic edge, 
with a little bit of angulation, good closure of the capsule. There's no reason for having more PCO with hydrophilic IOLs. So it's not the material, but it's the design of the optic and the haptics. By the way, uh, one who um, uh, published a lot about this is Oliver Findel, and he has exactly the same findings as my group has. So we, we cannot comment on how much PCO we have with this lens, but it's not only the material, it's specifically the design on how much you obliterate the posterior capsule. Uh, I think we have some additional type for discussion. So uh, after your uh, large experience, uh, are there patients uh, uh, for you that are not ideal candidates for this lens? So this is a lens nearly for everyone. At, at, at the beginning, I focused on the hyperopic patients, like everybody does with the trifocals. But now I see, and I was happy to learn that other uh, surgeons also experience that you can go to the myopic side of your uh, patient population. And that's something which was never seen before. Um, and uh, if you look now at your myopic patients, you can see that the, the expectation is very high. And... Uh, Okay, so my patient is, um, most of my patient is very high myopia, and I implanted a zero diopter also for these lenses. That's a good result. Patient satisfaction is very good. And so in your opinion, we can target highly myopic eyes as well with this lens? Yeah, high myopia patient and uh, also myopia, high, high myopia patient and also mild myopia and all kinds of patient we can try it. Great, thank you. Your opinion, do you share the same opinion, Ruth and Eva? Well, I, I guess I, I am a little bit uh, more conservative than that. High myopes are, are, are different eyes, but then I don't come from the Far East. You have much more experience with high myopia than I have. Uh, I, in a refractive lens exchange, I always prefer a slightly hyperopic patient. In cataract patients, I don't think it matters what their previous refraction was. They have bad vision, they need a solution, and if they want multifocal, I think that's the way to go. I hope that very soon we'll make the mind switch that we offer multifocal IOLs to all our patients, and we will only have a few excluded because they have a specific ocular problem not to do so, and I think we're on the step on that road. This is the future. Eva, and then the floor. Uh, I agree with you because uh, really uh, the rejected uh, from, from the qualification uh, is really very short, um, only with the problem with cornea, uh, because we don't know really if in uh, the shape is okay for the patients with a problem with uh, cornea, but uh, until now we don't implant it with the uh, patients with uh, some corneal problem or uh, after refractive uh, procedure. I can accept one question from the floor and then I think they will throw us out of this room. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, all final uh, one general question. How should we categorize this lens as trifocal, as idiof, or both of them? If we accept uh, combined, uh, right? That, that's uh, a question. How much uh, obtained effect comes from uh, trifocal side or uh, idiof side? Can you say something? A good question, because innovations are difficult to categorize. Uh, what's your opinion? Uh, starting from uh, Ruth and then all, my, all our speakers. I think this is basically a trifocal IOL with a very good continued line of vision from distance to near. So uh, if you have a good, good continued vision, you could use the marketing term of extended depth of focus. However, this is a very new innovation and the data are not out yet there of how completely the optics were done because of patenting issues. But in my opinion, also if you look at the MTF, you have a distance focus, an intermediate and a near, and in between, excellent vision. Okay? 
Yeah, I agree with her. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah, I would also like to add a little bit on this question because this is really a difficult one because you see these sinusoidal curves and you don't really see, um, you know, the shapes that would produce trifocality. However, that's the combination of trifocal and EDOF lens actually and, and it really does show characteristic of both and uh, this was nicely shown by Dr. Lapid Kozak, that it has the lowest stray light of them all. So that, that is going into more to EDOF lens, perhaps that's slightly longer distance for reading than we are used to classic trifocals, but on actually benefit of less stray light and less halos. Thank you. So guys, I think it's time to finish this interesting session. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. And thank all my speakers today. Continue to enjoy the meeting. This is ECRS, the most exciting meeting on ophthalmology in the world. <laughs>